So, what are we doing here right now? What are we doing? Why, why am I here? Why am I here? Hey, do you know how long it's been? What have you been doing? What have you been doing? You have been letting shit collect dust. Hey, hey, you look at me, look at me! You look at me. You are a nobody. You're not Corey. You don't get to just leave. You're, you're here and then you wanna leave. With that little number? With that little number you got right there. Like, are you just lazy? Are you just, are you just lazy? A fucking cow. Are you just, are you just a fat fucking cow? You lazy, you don't want to do shit. Is that what you are? Tighten the fuck up. Fuck out of here. This is my mic. This is my mic. I'm talking like this now. Hey, what's up? Ever wonder what the process was to make a meme? No? You, you, you never gave a shit. Oh, okay, well, um... Well, why the fuck are you even here? Ah, <laughs> well, my amigos and amigas, look no further because your boy has came with the socks. I thought it would be funny to look at the sparkles and champagne meme, you know, the, the one of the dude in the suit and just, you know, recreate it and edit it in a super crazy way from scratch, especially since that meme blew back up recently, actually. So to break it down, firstly, it starts with dressing to impress. So the dude in the videos with the suit is um, NFL player Shannon Sharp looking hella sharp in that fucking suit that he's in. Just look how he rocks that shit. God damn. He wears like five different suits in each photo, but I don't have five different suits. That's hella bucks and I can't afford that shit. So I'm just gonna rock one. So after putting on my Goodwill suit, I'm just gonna go ahead and mimic his poses. I have a little setup right here. Um, right in front of my living room actually and I'm just gonna go ahead and mimic his poses with the suit how he's rocking it Look how I'm swagging it. You know what I'm saying I should look I'm looking hella drippy in this suit I'm not gonna lie when I was rocking this suit. I was all like fuck bro. I gotta wear suits more often hella swaggy right now After you get the poses done with the pictures, this is it's simple as that Next is just straight up editing. So there are two ways to edit this. There is a easy, lazy bullshit way where literally you can just go ahead and throw each and every picture into Windows PowerPoint and go ahead and slap those transitions on there just like how you see in the memes. But that's boring. Why would you want to do that? Here, we do creativity. We improvise. So, I'm going to recreate these from scratch and I'm going to show you how to do it. First, the PowerPoint cube effect transition. So, we're going to start off with we're making these shits from scratch. Bear with me now. Go ahead and click the layer. It's going to be side by side. They're both going to be on the frame at the same time. Now, we're going to go ahead and scale it down to 80. I think 80 is a good scale because, you know, it's going to flip. We're going to need space. We're going to go ahead and type in perspective and perspective 3D is what it's going to pop up. Drag it onto there or double click it. Really up to you. It doesn't fucking matter. So, start the swivel. Go ahead and click the little stopwatch icon right here. Move it all the way to the end of the next clip. One, two, three, four. Go ahead and press this little button right here. It's the add or remove keyframe button. Basically, we're gonna start an animation. So now we can switch to swivel this way. And we're gonna make it to where it's just 90 degrees in, but I'm gonna make it 80 just so I can see it a little bit of it. Mm, 
maybe 89 just so I can see that little sliver of it. We're going to do the same shit to this one. We're going to go ahead and add the swivel at the beginning. But for this one, we're going to go ahead and press the keyframe button, stopwatch button for the time. And then we're going to go ahead and start this one at this side. This one's going to be started at this side. So we're going to go ahead and press um, negative 89 for this side go all the way to this side all the way to the end of this clip what you can do is just click this little next so hit that keyframe clip go ahead and go to the end of that one press this button again and then press zero so now it's like this we're gonna play it out bam so we already got 50 percent of it. it really is that easy all right now we're gonna make it more closer together like it's supposed to be starting off like this this one is going like this and it's starting to move click the stopwatch on the position and the scale we're gonna move both of these at the same time it's gonna make sense soon i promise all right i'm gonna go ahead and move this all the way over here go next we're gonna go ahead and move it frame by frame so it's gonna be this one's gonna be closer together and it's gonna be scaled down a little bit more just so i can match the cube of the edges so as you can see it's passing it now it's not passing it so now we're going to go ahead and go next and then we're going to go ahead and change it again just make it to where it matches is this tedious yes i know it's okay though next go ahead make it to where it matches or you can do five frames so next five frames but sometimes it doesn't match if you want more concise looks you can go ahead and do it frame by frame but since i'm kind of rushing we're going to go ahead and do five frames Ooh. It looks a little choppy. That's because we skipped it every five frames. So what, if you really want, you can fine tune it to where it doesn't move that much at all. So make it a little better, make it look a little better, make it look a little better. And at this point, this part can actually just go away. So yeah, right here, that's it. I stand the clip, just go ahead and switch it into that and go ahead and just delete these keyframes. That's on me and shorten this clip up a little bit more and that's it we're, we're done with that and just like that if you want you can go ahead and make it more sent more starting in the center but since i'm not trying to go ahead and move both this one too i'm just gonna go ahead and right click nest it transform effect layer switch that like this go ahead and scroll down go ahead and uh scale change the scale and the position of it we're going to start off in the middle for this one and we're going to go ahead and start off right here in the middle if you want you can change the anchor point too so it's not looking stupid make sure this one's in the middle do it like that and then we can go ahead and let it play out let it play out and then after it, it gets right here we can just go ahead and put it back to the middle and change the scale again so the scale right here will be this way like this letting it play out it's a little bit of trial and error so yeah that's goofy as fuck we're gonna go ahead and move this right here so you bam see normal right like that playing it it's literally a cube transition now for this next transition it's probably the simplest of transitions this one is just gonna be the little brighten up effect so where we get two pictures i'm just gonna get two more pictures side by side and going from this one to this one doing everything that you did before going ahead and changing it for, to where it brightens up then it goes in when to go ahead and click this button right here adjustment layer put it up here click ok simple and then we're gonna go ahead and put it in the middle right here if you want to go ahead and make it shorter we don't need to make it that long if you're a fucking freak like me i like to make it match so one two three four five one two three four five make it match you know this adds a little bit of consistency to it you know what i mean go ahead and click the color effect we want brightness and contrast and we want color lumentary color in there so the lumentary color is going to change going to go ahead and open this one for the drop down and what we want to do is change the exposure so for the exposure go ahead and just put it in the middle and put that shit all the way as high as possible go ahead and do the same thing before you do that keyframe of course and then go back here forgot to tell you the keyframe it let's go to zero and then yeah so when it goes up to the middle it makes it fade into fade into that like that then we're gonna go ahead and go into brightness do the same thing keyframe keyframe go ahead and go back and then click these right here go ahead and go back to the middle and then go ahead and put that shit all the way up as high as possible so now same thing with this one that looks terrible we're not doing that actually we're gonna go ahead and make this shit 50. so to put it back how it was before i'm gonna go ahead and go back one and then just make it all zero now we have this steady nice fade to where it goes in and out 
Next transition, we're gonna go ahead and change this to the crop. We're gonna go ahead and add the crop tool onto this one, overlap it a little bit. Like I said before, one, two, three, make it like that. Overlap it three frames back. Three times five is just 15 frames back. So then put the cropping tool on this bottom one right here. We're gonna go ahead and cool, do the cool um little rectangle shimmy down little shit right there. Over here on the masking tool, we're gonna go ahead and grab a rectangle. Go ahead and make it a little rectangle like that. Just like that, make sure you're as close as possible. Bam, connect it, make it match, make it match a little bit and simple, right? Drag this on the top, just on the top, do the same, go ahead and copy the crop, go ahead and paste it. You have another one with the same mask, go ahead and drag that shit down from the second crop. So that one is right there. So go ahead and make it to where it matches and then just go ahead, rinse and repeat. So after you go ahead and drag it down all the way to the ground, from the top bottom, it's gonna you're gonna have a shit ton of crop layers. If there's an easier way, let me know. But as far as I know, this shit is mad tedious. So we're gonna go ahead to get this first layer. Go ahead and keyframe it all the way to the start, all the way to the start of the clip. Start of this first clip right here. Keyframe it all the way to the beginning. You wanna go ahead and grab this first one, mask, keyframe the bottom, right? Then you're gonna go ahead and keyframe the bottom. So it's gonna go ahead and go up. It's gonna go ahead and slide up from the bottom down all the way to the next one. So up like that and drag that shit up towards it. And then go ahead and rinse and repeat for all of these. And then we get this little swooping down effect. I wanted to actually stagger it by, by breaking it down to actually stagger it. So by doing that, you would have to like make it play at individual time. So this one, go ahead and go one, two, three, four, and drag that in. Do the same thing here. One, two, drag that in. Now we have this swooping going down effect right there. It's like staggering down, like like a staircase. Sparkles in that man. I also thought it'd be funny to um, re-edit those hyper aggressive transition ones that you keep seeing all over TikTok with the shakes and the bass boosted sounds and all that. <laughs> I'm having too much fun with this shit. <laughs> Bruh. Okay, so opening After Effects, we're gonna be reading with composition settings. So we're gonna leave the resolution at 2160 by 3840, which is basically just 4K, but in vertical angle. We're gonna have the frame rate at 60 FPS. I was debating between 59, 94, but that's basically 60. So I'm just gonna leave it at 60 for the no frame drop. We're gonna go ahead and drop all our files onto the project right after. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mark the beat drops to every little bit of that song. And I'm just gonna go ahead and rinse and repeat doing that. So continuing on, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop my pictures onto the timeline. And then I'm gonna go ahead and crop it to fit to size. Then I'm gonna go ahead and cut it right at that second marker that I put down. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it with Control D. And then we'll go ahead and do that with each and every marker that we have. It's gonna be a lot of repeating and a lot of tedious process. I'm gonna do that separating my five pictures that I have on the timeline. Doing that, it's gonna end up looking like this, like so. Okay, so for our first effect, we're gonna go on effect presets and we're gonna go ahead and type in Twitch. It's actually a paid preset by Video Copilot. I'm gonna go ahead and use this one order to get the effect that I want. I'm trying to get this sort of like jumpy, twitchy effect within every chain. So you can go ahead and copy my settings if you like. I want to have the amount as 200. I'm going to have the speed at 100. I'm going to go ahead and open that drop tab on enable, turn on blur, turn on color, turn on light, leave the rest turned off. Gonna go ahead and go on slide. Gonna have slide amount as 100. Gonna have slide switches to 0 0.60. Just gonna leave that right there. And slide duration is gonna be at 1.0. I think those kind of have like the best, those are like the best settings for the Twitch. And also put slide RBG split to 10 and unique C slide, unique slide to 400. We're gonna go ahead and press the stopwatch just like Premiere Pro and go ahead and type in 200 so that I can start with a lot of jumpiness, a lot of twitchiness, a lot of jumpiness. Then we're gonna go ahead and move down the timeline and then set it to zero, just so that we can get that good, you know, that good slide to it, that good transition. Open that, highlight both of those, click keyframe assistant, 
and then go on easy ease after you that you go ahead and click the graph on the top there and then we're just going to go ahead and ease this in which is basically going to make it more smoother all easy is is doing is making it smoother through the time of the file so when you play it has a nice gradual end instead of that crazy ass stop it's not it's not too obsessive it's more tame with it then we're gonna go ahead and get our shake this is sapphire shake this is also another paid preset that i'm gonna go ahead and use um we're gonna go ahead and drag that onto our video and for this we're not gonna change any settings yet we're gonna go ahead and drop the drop down menu and then click the stopwatch on amplitude and then go from the beginning of the clip to the end of the clip so the beginning of the clip is gonna be the beginning of the clip i have it at five just so i can get that nice gradual shake and then at the end it's going to make it zero make it stop so it's going to have like that nice shake to it until it stops and it's going to gradually end go ahead do the same thing with the easy ease and then go ahead and click the graph and we're going to make our easy ease just like that it's going to be like an l shape same thing that we did with the other one so it's going to play out like that after that's said and done we're going to go ahead and copy and paste each and every effect onto each and every picture that i have it for this is a very tedious process so i'm just going to go ahead and fast forward it skip to the very end where i have it done already after i have that all done i'm going to go ahead and highlight each and every layer that i have pre-compose it i'm gonna keep all the settings the same not gonna change anything on here you can name the composition if you want to but it's basically kind of the same thing as nesting with premiere pro but it's not entirely the same just go ahead and press ok on that and then i'm gonna go ahead and add a sapphire flicker effect i'm gonna go ahead and add a sapphire flicker effect just to get that nice flickering um, you can go ahead and uh, copy my settings, but this is really just something that you can just play with to make sure you got the best settings to your liking. I'm going for a more over exaggerated look, really jumpy, really bumpy. After you add that on the layer, I'm just going to go ahead and color grade it a little bit. Give it a lot more contrast, give it a lot more, um, a lot more depth to it, make it look extremely kind of like kind of like those TikTok edits you see i'm kind of going for that look of the aggressive shake TikTok editing kind of style to it that cap cut preset bullshit that people like editing with that's kind of what i'm going for so but i'm also going to add my little twist to it make it look kind of cinematic add some vignetting and that should be it with it that's how you um go ahead and do that so after i saw said and done it should end up like this i'll be popping so how did i do go ahead and comment down other broken humor piece of shit videos you'd like me to remake and go ahead and share this to your hoes and your no good friends all right thank you very much i will see you guys in the next video